the issue that to me is most important is what are we doing to uh, the future generations, the kids who will be exposed for most of their lifetime uh, to this type of radiation. Uh, we, we need to understand the risks to not have them exposed to levels which could be harmful and potential uh, cancer, uh, increased cancer risk. It's not the 70 year old people. So if, if, if a 70 year old male says to you, he's not concerned, great. But that, that isn't why the study was conducted. It was conducted to find out what is the risk to the general population and in particular, uh, children as they uh, continuously are exposed to this type of radiation. So the NTP study was conducted to, to lend critical information as to what the effects could be to humans. Exactly. That's why FDA nominated it to NTP. What are, they wanted the information so that they could evaluate what are the human health risks. And that's why it was done. And now they are rejecting. The FDA is saying it's our opinion that this doesn't apply, and the FCC is using that to rationalize that they don't have to even exactly. update their limits, which exactly. are over, they're really over 30 years old because the science that they used was uh, from 10 years prior to when those well, limits were even set. Right. Well, how do you compare uh, this issue to climate change? Well, to me, it's a similar situation, what's going on with respect to climate change in that there's the evidence uh, with respect to the effect of climate change on uh, the earth. And this, our country seems to feel we can ignore that information because it may interfere with the profits of the oil industry. Uh, with respect to cell phones, we have the evidence and uh, the FCC feels, or the FDA as well, because both agencies have the regulatory uh, uh, oversight for cell phone radiation to ignore it. It seems to me also being done to not interfere with the profits of the wireless industry. Mm -hmm. And there's also just a handful, really a handful of industry connected scientists and um, federal governments around the world that are looking to that handful uh, and they're industry loyal. Whereas there are hundreds of scientists who are stating that there is an issue that has to be addressed frankly and, and honestly related to biological effects from this radiation. Right, yeah. We, we, we shouldn't be testing on human populations, especially for diseases which can have a long latency and not have a, an answer for 20 to 30 years, as well as an answer which it could have a, an adverse effect on individuals. There's so many studies that are just keep accumulating showing effects on wildlife and birds and bees mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and yet there's not a single like the fda doesn't have any expertise nor the authority nor budget to be looking at effects to bees and trees and there's no agency health and safety agency that i know of that has jurisdiction to address that when especially when it comes to 5g with all of these antennas mm -hmm. yeah i so I think there's a lot, a lot of expertise that's missing at the FDA right now. Maybe, but they, the FDA maybe, the, maybe it's easier to ignore data if you don't know how to use it. <laughs> I mean, with all these antennas, 800,000 new antennas that are going to be just in the United States alone, there's no agency who's looking at whether we have a safe, allowable limit in terms of the maximum permissible exposure limits. Right, yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. We're, as uh, Senator Blumenthal said, we seem to be flying uh, high, not knowing what we're doing.
We are flying blind. Blind, flying blind, right? <laughs> Hi. I guess you can be high in many ways. <laughs> I am blind. <laughs> okay, well. Okay, well, thank you. Sure, take care.